Hi, today we will do the chemistry paper 2, Feb March 2024. I will be going through each of the questions and explain the tricky ones. Question number one. The solid X is heated for 60 seconds and we are shown a heating curve and we have to find the melting point. So if we recall, the melting point will be the first straight line on the graph which is this one and if we lead it here it's around about 170 so let's be question number two which statements about diffusion are correct so statement one aqueous ions cannot diffuse in water they can so this is wrong two diffusion is caused by the random movement of particles yes Particles are spread out in all directions in diffusion. Yes Diffusion can only take place in solids and liquids. No, it, it can take place in solid not solid Liquids and gases only so this is wrong. So it's two and three which is C Question number three which statement about an atom of fluorine uh, Is correct So we have to uh, understand this part and then find the correct statement if we read the statement number one it contains a total of 28 protons and neutrons and electrons so if we add 19 plus 9 which is 28 so the correct answer is a question number four two of the isotopes of calcium are represented by 40 uh, calcium 40 and calcium 44 which statement explains why these isotopes of calcium have identical chemical properties? Basically, the chemical properties of two substances, uh, two elements are identical because of the valency electrons or the last electron shell, and hence these both are the same. Uh, these both are the same element of calcium, but dif uh, different isotopes means they wish they will have the same number of electrons in their outer shell so the reason will be b question number five which statement describes a property of potassium iodide potassium iodide is a compound a, an, an ionic compound means it will conduct electricity when molten so the answer is d question number six methanol uh, CH2O has a boiling point of negative 19 degrees Celsius. At 20, negative 20 degrees Celsius, the liquid methanol is a non-conductor of electricity. So, in a sample of methanol, the atoms of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen have the noble gas configuration, electronic configuration. And they can... Uh, combined together through any of these three and uh, we are asked to find what type of bonding is between carbon and oxygen carbon and oxygen are non-metals and they will bond together through covalent bonding hence they will share electrons and we know carbon uh, carbon requires four more electrons four electrons for carbon and the carbon can get two electrons from hydrogen and it will get one from oxygen through a double bond if we keep it that way and oxygen requires two so the total amount of electrons will be two pairs of electrons shared meaning four electrons are shared which is the answer is a question number seven the structures of diamond and graphite are shown which statement about diamond and graphite is correct so this is a straightforward question you just have to learn the properties and the features of diamond and graphite and the, all of the other giant covalent structures and we can we know that diamond and graphite has strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms these this part not the intermolecular forces which are weak in graphite question number eight which row contains a description of a description of metallic bonding and a property that is that is explained by 
reference to metallic bonding so let's see the first column it's not a or b because it's positive ions not negative it's c or d so if we check here we can see a metal will react with an acid producing hydrogen yes it will but it uh, this statement is not taking in the reference as metallic bonding it has nothing to do with metallic bonding <coughs> If you look at D, a piece of ma a metal can be molded into different shapes, which is uh, which can be used as a reference to the metallic bonding because the lattice can positive ions lattice can slide over each other. So it's D. <coughs> Question number nine. What is the relative molecular mass (MR) of sulfuric sulfur dioxide? So oxygen is sixteen times 2 which is uh, because of dioxide it's 32 and sulfur is also 32 so 32 plus 32 is 64 which is D question number 10 magnetite is an ore of iron which contains the ions Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus and oxygen 2 minus only so only these three what is the formula of magnetite so this is a tricky question. You have to include these both ores into your formula. It cannot be only one of them because they are telling you it contains both. So this should be present in the formula as well. So how we do that? Now, the best way to do is check all of the options. And if you go through all of the options and compare that, this only, uh, this is wrong because when will be there uh minus two but here it shows uh fe is zero which is wrong so a is wrong this is also wrong like if there's three oxygen atoms it means it will uh be minus the charge total charge for the oxygen atoms will be minus six and only two of the fe are there which means it will be it can be minus six if there are three plus but then it won't actually work because we need to include both of them so p is also wrong it does not include fe2 plus this is also wrong it does not include fe3 plus so the correct answer left is d because when we have three when we have four oxygen atoms that will be four times negative two will be negative eight so if we in order to achieve negative uh, positive eight charge for the uh, iron atoms ions it has to be negative 3 uh, Fe uh, Fe plus 3 2 times and Fe 2 plus 1 time which will give us a total charge of 8 plus so the right answer will be D question number 11 concentrated aqueous sodium chloride and dilute sulfuric acid are both electrolyzed using inert Electro electrodes which row identifies the product form at the cathode in each electrolysis cathode is basically the negative electrode so it will attract the positive ions hence we are told it's concentrated it does not do anything because if it is concentrated chloride will form on the anode but we are asking about the cathode so it will be hydrogen in both cases b question number 12 electrolytes can be broken down by electrolysis which row which rows are correct for each electrolyte so there should be two correct row rows in the table let's check the first one dilute aqueous potassium chloride is broken down by electrolysis and we get cathode we hydrogen is formed and anode oxygen which is correct because dilute uh if it is dilute chloride won't form so one is correct concentrated hydrochloric acid again hydrogen will be formed and chlorine will be formed this time because it's concentrated so it's two so there are only two options you can choose in the op in the a or b or c or d so it's one and two which is a Question number 13. Which statement about hydrogen, oxygen, fuel, cells is correct? 
a straightforward question <coughs> if we go through all of the options this is wrong because hydrogen is obtained from the fossil fuels or natural gas reserves the only product is carbon dioxide no it's water so this is wrong the reaction is endothermic it's not it's exothermic so this is wrong the answer is d no toxic gases are produced question number 14 which statement defines the activation energy for a reaction the activation energy is the minimum energy the colliding particles must have in order to react so it's a question number 15 the equation for the complete combustion of ethene is shown the bonds but the bond energy is listed so the question asks us to find the enthalpy change of one mole only one mole now we have to keep that in mind basically we have to do the calculation so if we do two times uh two times two two times two of the hydrogen carbon bonds plus only one carbon carbon double bond also adding that to five times uh double bond of oxygen which is five in the here minus this all minus four times there are two carbon double bonds so it will be four times two times eight zero five which we need to add if we add we need to add this which is again two times two four six four which will give us a total change of energy in negative to 2472 now this is not the final answer because they even highlighted here it's one mole and here it is two mole this number means it is only two moles so we need to get only one mole so we will divide it by two and we will get 1 2 3 7 and the answer is b question number 16 in experiment one small lumps of limestone are added to dilute ethonic acid at 40 degrees celsius the volume of carbon dioxide released is measured at regular intervals time intervals the graph is shown and we have to find which changes will give us the experiment two results if we look at the graph we can see that the graph is showing a slow reaction because in experiment one the reaction finishes almost here but experiment two it finishes here so it's slower and we are told the lumps are small lumps of limestone So for like a reaction to be slower, the surface area has to be less. So it has to be large lumps, and the temperature uh, can't be higher. Otherwise, the reaction will be faster. So it's same or low, and the temperature must be same. So it's A. Question number seventeen. <coughs> In the Haber process, nitrogen and hydrogen are reacted to form ammonia. Yes. the forward reaction is as exothermic so the backward reaction will be endothermic which conditions produce maximum yield of ammonia so we are uh, talking about the yield of ammonia so we have to check the conditions pressure should be high because the pressure is high the equilibrium will move to the side with less particles which is the product side so pressure will be high so c d are wrong and the temperature will be low If the temperature is low, it will go forward reaction, meaning more yield of ammonia. So it's B. It can't be high, otherwise the reaction will go backwards. Hence, it's endothermic. Question eighteen. The process, uh, the process of Swald is used to make nitric acid. The conditions are listed, and we are to. the state which condition is also present in contact process three is wrong temperature is 450 pressure is not this 
it's higher and the statement one is correct because the transition element is a transition element will be the catalyst for content process as well so it's one question number 19 hydrogen iodide is dissolved in water this is the formula shown and we have to find the color change for the final color change in the solution of this the water and hydrogen iodide first we add dumb red litmus litmus paper if we look closely uh, the ions are broken in the water means it will be a neutral solution so there will be no color change same for potassium magnetite there will be no color change it will stay brown so the answer is c no color change 20 question number 20 which statements about aqueous ethonic acids are correct Again, we go through all of the statements and find the right one. It's potassium magnetite, so this is wrong. Question uh, statement two. Mm, this is correct. This is the classic metal reaction with acid. If pH is almost three, yes. <coughs> Four, it produces esters called methanoids. No. They are called ethanoids. So this is wrong. It's 2 and 3. C. Question number 21. Which element forms an oxide? Uh, acidic oxide. Non metals will form acidic oxides and metals will form basic. So any non metal here in the list will be the right answer, which is sulfur. Question number 22. Which statement describes the properties of hydrochloric acid? If we go through the statements, the correct answer is A because carbon dioxide is produced when limestone escaped hydrochloric acid. Question number 23. Elements P and Q have the same number of electron shells, meaning they are in the same period. An atom of Q has more electrons in its outer shell than of P. Which statement are correct? Again, we go through the statement. They are not in the same group, they are in the same period, so this is statement 2 is correct. P has a greater tendency to po form po positive ions than Q. This is also true because P has more, P has less electrons than Q in its outer shell. Hence, it can lose them easily rather than gain. So, it's 1 and, I mean it's 2 and 3 again, so it's C. Question number 24. Which statement reacts with... <coughs> which substance reacts with dilute sulfuric acid to form a salt that can be removed from the resulting mixture by filtration? So we recall, we, filtration means it's going to separate a solid from the solution and how to form a solid. If we go through all of the other reactants we are they are there in the options it can't be carbon it can't be copper because we get copper sulfate with soluble copper or copper carbonate no aqueous sodium no we get sodium sulfate which is also soluble the correct answer is barium because barium sulfate is a salt that's insoluble so you can remove it by filtration question number 15 uh, 25 Acetine is below iodine in the group group 7 in the periodic table, which row describes the properties of acetine. So if you remember in group 7, as we go down, their activity decreases, and as we go down, the melting point and boiling point will increase, meaning they will get solid at room temperatures. So it's C or D, and... It, it does not displace chlorine, bromine, or iodine because it's less reactive than them. So it's D. Question number 26. Which property of copper explains why it is classified as a transition element? Transition, transition elements have some unique features. They have high melting and boiling points. They are strong. They are hard. They have colored compounds and they act as catalysts 
Also, they have variable oxidation numbers or oxidation states. If we look in the options, we find that and it's B. 27. Brass, in a, brass is an alloy that is formed from copper and zinc. <coughs> Which statement are correct? So, if we go through the statement, we can see one is wrong because zinc does not conduct electricity. Oh, my bad. <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah, all matches do. Yes, it does. And brass is a compound. It's a mixture. So, this is wrong. And brass is harder than zinc. Yes, alloys are harder than their pure metals they are made from. So, this is correct. It's 1 and 3. C. Question number 28. The equations for the reaction of, of metal M with aqueous zinc sulfate is shown. So here metal M is reacted with zinc sulfate and we can see zinc sulfate become reduced and M becomes oxidized as it becomes an ion and loses its electron to zinc. So if we look at the options we can see zinc ions can remove electrons from M as you can see from the equation so this is correct the correct answer is D. This is because zinc must be more reactive than M. Question number 29. In the blast furnace, the impurity silicon oxide is removed by the formation of slag. And which compound from the equations, that uh, the product of the equation, is used to remove that impurity? So, if we recall, it's calcium oxide, which is formed from limestone. And that equation is shown by C. Question number 30. Aluminium is extracted from bauxite by electrolysis. Which statement is correct? If we go through the statements, it's not A. That's wrong. They're reduced, not oxi oxidized. B. No, it's anode, not cathode. So, wrong. C. Carbon dioxide is produced at the anode. It is because the oxygen produced at high temperatures will react with the graphite, which is made up of carbon, hence producing carbon dioxide. Calliolite is added to remove impurities. It isn't. It's added to increase the conductivity and reduce the melting point. So it's C. Question number 31. Iron rust but aluminium Aluminium does not easily corrode. Why is it? Because aluminium has a protective layer of oxida aluminium oxidize, which is very unreactive. So that is D. Question number 32. This might be a tricky one, but it's easy if you get the point. Here we have to find the, find the compounds which contain the most amount of Nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium because these three elements are present in fertilizers because they are needed for the best growth of plants. So, if we check the options, no sulfur, no phosphorus, so wrong. All of the three are present, so this might be one of the correct options. Um, no potassium, wrong, and no phosphorus, wrong. So, it's B. Question 33. We have to set the color change of water, no, of cobalt chloride when water is added, which is blue to pink. So, B. Question 34. How do carbon dioxide and methane cause global warming? <clears throat> the way they cause global warming is they emit the thermal energy they have absorbed back to Earth. So, the thermal energy comes from the sun through radiation which is absorbed by these gases and they reflect back into the back to the earth's atmosphere and surface hence heating up the earth's surface which is a 34 uh, 35 four statements are listed about photosynthesis and which are correct yes one is correct it is required 
two is wrong. It's the opposite thing. These both have the reactions, and this these are the products. So this is wrong. Photosynthesis requires energy from light. It does. Photosynthesis releases carbon dioxide. It doesn't. It actually needs carbon dioxide. So it's one and three, which is A. Question number 36. Which molecules are structural isomers? This is, this might be a tricky one for some of us because we have to like unpack these parts. But uh, the easy trick here is if the double bond is involved, just check the position of it. So here, if you look at the position, it's between two carbon atoms here and there. I mean, not two. It's between three and two. So it's the third position. And here is the last one. It's not here. It's here. So these both are not structural isomers. So this is no. So the correct answer we remain with is the molecules with no double bonds which are one and three and if we pack unpack these and then write them in the structure formula we will see they both are isomers so it's one and three b question number 37 which statements about the reaction of ethane with steam are correct we go through the statements the product has a higher molecular mass than ethane it does because we are adding oxygen as well so basically ethene plus steam is ethanol which is definitely heavier than ethane so this is correct product reacts with aqueous bromine it doesn't because it does not have any double bond ethanol does not have any double bond so this is wrong the number of electrons shared between carbon atom decreases so if we draw the formula of ethane, uh, ethene, which is carbon, carbon, double bond, and one hydrogen here, and one hydrogen here. And one hydrogen here as well. So if we see the total one, two, one, two, three, for five and six if we count the double bond for ethene now if we go for uh, ethanol ethanol is uh h c and c and one oxygen and then hydrogen and one <coughs> carbon here and one carbon here and one carbon here Yes, so if we check the bonds, we can see that this is less than what is there in 18. So this is actually correct. And this is wrong. Only at the alcohol is formed. So 4 is wrong. 2 is wrong. It's 1 and 3, which is B. Question number 38. Methane and chlorine react to form chloromethane, which is a substitution reaction and requires a, a UV light. So we are just asked the conditions and the type of reaction, which is A. Question number 39. These two, there are two polymers, X and Y, and we are asked about their monomers and the linkage. If we look at the linkage, it's the same linkage. It's the amide linkage. They both have the same linkage. And, but the molecules, molecules, the monomers are different because here the white block this monomer has nh and co but here it only has nh and the same for this and this so these both are having different monomers but the same linkage so it's b question number 40 we are using paper chromatography to test the substance Q. So if we do that, we are shown two spots on the 
electrochromatograph which means substance cube must contain two uh, soluble substances dissolved in it which is basically a mixture of two substances dissolved in it hence uh, we are asked to uh, find the correct statement the correct statement here must be C because you already found there are only two substances so it's C and the paper is done